How can a pilot use his instruments to avoid running into stuff while flying in the weather? In today's instrument ground course lesson, I'm going to be introducing you to the altimeter. But before we can go into too much detail on this instrument, you first need to have a good understanding of the different types of altitude. Welcome to Free Pilot Training, where today we're going to be talking about the different kinds of altitude you need to know about as an instrument pilot. And in order to be able to use the altimeter effectively, this is something that you have to understand first. This is because contrary to what anyone might tell you, your altimeter only displays one type of altitude, and that is indicated altitude. Indicated altitude is the altitude that you read on the altimeter itself. And that's important to remember because indicated altitude is not always accurate. There are things we can do to make it more accurate, but it's never gonna be perfect. Most of the time, we want our altimeter to give us an accurate estimation of our true altitude. We'll discuss that more in a minute. But in order for the altimeter to do this, we must first dial in the correct altimeter setting into the Colesman window. And when we do this, this allows the altimeter to give us a really close estimate of our true altitude. Now, if it were possible to build the perfect altimeter and we dialed in the correct setting, then this thing would tell us our true altitude. This is why you'll sometimes see calibrated altitude used on some of the performance charts in your POH, because every altimeter is different and the errors you get on those are different as well. Calibrated altitude assumes that you have a perfect altimeter. But anyway, this guy gives you your indicated altitude. And if we dial in the proper barometric pressure, then it will give us a pretty good idea of our true altitude. And true altitude is one of the most useful altitudes to the IFR pilot. And that's because true altitude is our vertical distance or height above sea level. In fact, if you ever see the letters MSL after an altitude, then you know that they're talking about your true altitude because this stands for mean sea level because you're flying a specific height above the average sea level. Now, true altitude is important because a lot of altitudes that you're going to be flying as an instrument pilot are true altitudes. This is because it takes special equipment to measure your height above the ground. And when the terrain changes rapidly, instruments that measure your height above the ground aren't really that accurate. In addition to that, towers and other tall structures can complicate things as well. So the national airspace has been carefully developed so you can just fly a specific true altitude that should theoretically keep you safe. The only problem with that is what we talked about a second ago. First, your altimeter must be set correctly. But also, the altimeter isn't always perfect because altimeters were made by human beings. If they were made by aliens, this probably wouldn't be a problem. But they weren't. They were made by humans. I'm only joking about the alien part, but I wanted to be sure and point out the flaws in your altimeter because there are some things that can make it less accurate, particularly extremely cold temperatures. Your altimeter can be off by quite a bit when it's cold outside. So I want to make sure you know that this thing does not give you your true altitude. This is your indicated altitude. Have I beat this dead horse enough or do you want some more? Next, we have absolute altitude and absolute altitude is our vertical distance above the surface. Keep in mind, when we're talking about the surface, this could be anything from water, open fields, mountaintops, or whatever. We're not talking about buildings, towers, or any other man-made objects. This is your vertical distance above God's green earth. And this is important to remember because the surface can change a lot. You've got hills and mountains, valleys and canyons, all kinds of stuff. But your vertical distance above these surfaces is your absolute altitude. Anytime you see the letters AGL after an altitude, this stands for above ground level, which is an absolute altitude. And once again, I want to point out that your altimeter does not tell you your absolute altitude. Well, I guess it could if the elevation in that area was exactly zero feet MSL, but that's pretty rare. Now they do make special altimeters that do tell you your absolute altitude or your height above the surface, but they're super expensive. So you probably won't see any of those during your training. These are called radar altimeters or radio altimeters. And if you know anything about the 5G shenanigans, then you also know that these are super unreliable right now because of the 5G signals being put out by cell phone towers. This is why it's so important to know about the cow altimeter. And for those of you who don't know what this is, I'll give you a quick lesson. C-130 pilots use the cow altimeter to determine when their absolute altitude is below 500 feet AGL. If you're above 500 feet, you won't be able to see the legs of a cow that's standing on the surface. If you're below 500 feet AGL, you can. Now the altimeter is all in fun, but the next time you're out flying around, you'll find it to be pretty accurate. Keep in mind, if you don't have a radar altimeter like we just mentioned, 
or you're in the weather and you can't see the ground, the old caltimeter isn't going to work for you either. In this situation, the only way you can find your absolute altitude is to calculate it. And the way you can do that is to take your true altitude and subtract the height of the terrain in that area. Once again, your altimeter isn't perfect, but it's going to give you a pretty close estimation of your true altitude, which is your height above sea level. So, if your true altitude is 4,000 feet MSL, and you look down at your IFR low chart and see that the elevation in that area is 540 feet MSL, like it is here at Hot Springs, Arkansas, then you can subtract 540 from 4,000 to get an absolute altitude of 3,460 feet AGL. Don't forget, your altimeter is not perfect, so neither is this altitude but it should be pretty close. Next, let's talk about pressure altitude. And for VFR operations, we mainly only use this for performance calculations. But now that you're getting your instrument rating, you could actually use this in flight as well. Before we get into that, you might be wondering what the heck pressure altitude even is. And if you are, pressure altitude is simply the height of your aircraft above the standard datum plane. Don't look at me like that. Don't you know what the standard datum plane is? Yeah, I didn't know what that was either, so let's talk about that for a second. A long time ago, in a faraway land, there once was a scientist, and this scientist was smarter than you and me. And apparently, he measured the atmospheric pressure at a bunch of different places at sea level across the globe. And guess what he figured out? He figured out that, on average, the pressure at sea level is exactly 29.92 inches of mercury. And because of that, we tell new pilots that on average, the pressure at sea level is 29.92 inches of mercury. Now, the funny thing about this is, is that the pressure at sea level is almost never 29.92 inches. But I guess this gives us a starting point for all our calculations, so that's what we use. And that's why we call 29.92 standard pressure. Now, here's where things get kind of interesting. The second you dial in 29.92 inches into the Colesman window of your altimeter, your altimeter will actually tell you your pressure altitude. And this is important to know because when you're dialing in this pressure, you're actually telling your altimeter where sea level is, not the pressure at your field. I think that's why a lot of people get confused when they're dealing with the altimeter. They think they're dialing in the pressure at the field. Nope. If you did that, the altimeter would actually read zero. The altimeter setting you get from the ATIS or the AWOS or wherever is actually what the pressure would be at sea level based on the current pressure at that field. That's why we call it an altimeter setting and not a pressure reading. So don't use your iPhone weather app to dial in the pressure setting because that doesn't account for your field elevation. But anyway, when we dial in 29.92 into the Colesman window, the altimeter not only gives you your indicated altitude, but now it gives you a fairly accurate representation of your pressure altitude. And this scale with all the pressure settings is called the barometric pressure scale. You might see that again, so remember that. This scale in your Colesman window is called the barometric pressure scale. But why do we care about pressure altitude? Well, there's actually two reasons. First, when you start flying in class alpha airspace, you'll be operating at flight levels instead of true altitudes. And this simply means that you fly the indicated altitude assigned by ATC, but you have 29.92 set in your altimeter. For example, let's say Memphis Center gave me this instruction. Citation 274 Niner Foxtrot, climb and maintain flight level 190. Climb and maintain flight level 190, citation 274 Niner Foxtrot. In this situation, Memphis is telling me that they want me to climb up and fly a pressure altitude of 19,000 feet. And when I dial in 2992 into my altimeter, that allows me to do that. The phrase flight level lets both of us know that we're going to be operating like this, and they do this so they don't have to give you a bunch of altimeter settings throughout your flight. Things can be pretty busy as it is in class alpha airspace. We don't need a bunch of extra chatter giving out altimeter settings. Once again, another thing we use pressure altitude for is performance calculations. Pressure altitude is a great starting point for performance calculations. And that's because your airplane doesn't care about true altitude. It cares about the thickness of the air. And pressure altitude is a pretty good indicator of the thickness of the air but it's not perfect because the temperature can actually make the air thinner as well. Because of this, there's one more type of altitude that you need to know about as a pilot, and that's density altitude. Density altitude is pressure altitude that has been corrected for non-standard temperature. Remember that scientist we talked about earlier that tested the pressure at different spots at sea level across the globe? 
Well, he also figured out that on average, the temperature is somewhere around 15 degrees Celsius at sea level as well. And this is important because it gives us a starting point to know how the temperature affects the thickness of our air. If the temperature is above 15 degrees Celsius, the air molecules actually move further apart and that increases the density altitude. The pressure altitude didn't change, but the air is thinner because of this, so the airplane isn't going to perform as well. If the temperature is lower, then the air molecules move closer together. And this means that the airplane will perform better because the air is thicker, even though the pressure altitude might not have changed. But here's something kind of weird. A lot of times you won't see density altitude mentioned in the performance charts of the pilot's operating handbook. Because of this, a lot of people don't talk about density altitude that much. But what you might not realize is that the performance charts in the POH do take the temperature into account along with pressure altitude. So they are using density altitude, you might just not see the name in the POH. This is why some pilots refer to density altitude as performance altitude. The density altitude is what directly affects the performance of your airplane. Now, here's something you might get asked on the written test. When would true altitude equal pressure altitude? Well, if the pressure at sea level was in fact 29.92 inches, in this case, we would dial in 29.92 into the altimeter, and our altimeter would actually give us a pretty good idea of our true altitude and our pressure altitude. So, the answer to this question is only during standard atmospheric conditions, or when the altimeter is 29.92. Here's another one you could get asked. When would density altitude equal pressure altitude? Once again, standard temperature at sea level is 15 degrees Celsius. So if the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, then density altitude would equal pressure altitude. So the answer is this one, at standard temperature or 15 degrees Celsius. Now, here's something kind of interesting. This means that if the current pressure outside is standard and the temperature outside is standard, then theoretically your altimeter could give you a pretty accurate estimation of your density altitude. Keep in mind this is almost never going to happen, but in theory it is possible. 99.9% .9 of the time you have to calculate density altitude and the best way to do that is with a flight computer. And it's important to do this because if density altitude is high, you need to start taking some precautions. High density altitude means you're going to need more runway for takeoffs. The airplane is going to climb more slowly and your landing distances are going to be longer. Your propeller is also going to be less efficient as well and this means you'll fly slower. For some airplanes you might need to lean the mixture or take other precautions. So it's important to understand when you need to do that. Okay so we've got indicated altitude. This is the altitude that you read on your altimeter. It's not always perfect, but it can give you a pretty close estimation of your true altitude and your pressure altitude once it's set properly. True altitude is our height above sea level, and if we dial in the proper altimeter setting, the indicated altitude that we see on the altimeter will be pretty stinking close to our true altitude. Pressure altitude is our height above the standard datum plane, or you could say it's our height above an altimeter setting of 29.92 inches because 29.92 isn't always the pressure at sea level. That's just the average. If we dial in 29.92 into the altimeter, our indicated altitude is now pretty close to our pressure altitude. Absolute altitude is our height above the surface, and once again, this takes a special tool to read this. Most of the time we have to calculate it. Then last but not least, we have our density altitude, and this takes our pressure altitude and accounts for the temperature to give us an accurate representation of the thickness of the air, which we can use for performance calculations. And that is a brief introduction to the altimeter and the different types of altitude. In the next lesson, we're gonna be diving in even deeper to the altimeter because there's a lot you should know about as an IFR pilot. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to smash that like button and I'll throw the next video right here when I'm done with that. Sip.